Welcome to week 11. As you can see here, Uwe Ale has moved up to the number one spot on the Heisman list after his uh, four touchdown performance last week against Oklahoma State in that rainy game. That's going to be good enough to move him to the top spot. So we're going to try to keep feeding him for the rest of the season, see if we can't get him to win this award. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this week's matchup against Texas Tech. So Texas Tech did start off the season at 5-1, and one, uh, but losing their last two games has uh, dropped them down in the polls quite a bit. They're still hanging in there at number 22. Uh, they've got, you know, as we've seen the past few seasons, they've always got a top-rated pass offense, and then when we, when we play against them, it's like, they forgot how to pass so we're gonna see how that shakes out in this one let's go ahead and jump into the game highlights it is the first leg of this doubleheader on the road against Texas Tech and believe it or not it's raining we probably played a million rainy games this season third and goal on the first drive for Texas Tech screen pass over to Willis he's gonna be stopped up at the line of scrimmage gonna be uh, forced to kick the field goal here short field goal that one's through Texas Tech's going to take a 3-0 lead. We had a rough time in this first half. A lot of turnovers. But this one is going to be straight over the middle to C.J. Nelson, who's wide open in the end zone. 24 yards on that one. Going to take a 7-3 lead at the end of the first quarter. Long field goal for Texas Tech. Or actually for us, sorry. 10-3 <laughs> is going to be the score there. Deep pass down the left sideline. Look at C.J. Nelson hauling in his second touchdown catch of the day. This one from like 40-something yards. Good start statistically for Uwe Ale. First and 10, though. Underthrows that one. Might have let it slip out of his hand a little bit from the rain. But that's going to be an interception. Texas Tech takes control. And on third and five later on their, neck, on their drive, Strong's not going to be able to get the pass off. He goes down for a sack. Loss of two. We're going to call a timeout, stop that clock, and they're going to take the three points here. So 17-6 to six is going to be the score. We're going to try to go down and score before half. Ale rolling out right, can't find anybody, going to take it himself, and the ball gets jarred loose, and Texas Tech picks it up. Luckily, he loses his balance and goes down at the 25. But we are going to be on defense once again. Five seconds left in the half. He's going to go down. They're going to call a timeout. It's fourth and one with three seconds left. They're going to take three points. 17-9 to nine is going to be the score at halftime. Tough game, like I said. A lot of turnovers for us and a lot of punts on both sides. Luckily, we've been able to keep them out of the end zone at this point. Fourth and seven fake punt. Damian Kaba can't come up with a pick, but he knocks it down. Going to give us the ball in great field position. And later on in the drive, third and goal. Ale going to run it in himself. Gets it in from four yards out. Makes it 24-9 late in the third quarter. Next drive for Texas Tech. Third and 12 strong. Can't find anybody. He goes down for a big eight-yard sack. Brian Dixon, the one making the sack that time. And on first and goal in our next drive, option pitch out to Samuel. He's in for a touchdown. 31-9 early in the fourth quarter. And later on, on our next drive, going to get another field goal, making it 34-9, to which is going to be your final score. C.J. Nelson, player of the game, those two first-half touchdowns, enough to get him those honors. We're going to go to 9-0 and here on the season. Texas Tech falls to 5-4. and Here's the stats from the game, 331-236, to probably our worst offensive production of the season. I think our team's getting tired of playing in the rain, but... You know, we did end up coming out on top pretty decisively. Let's take a look at the top 25 matchups from week 11. Top five matchup, two undefeated teams, Washington taking on UCLA. The Huskies are going to get a 42-35 to win. Number 12, Ohio State takes down Penn State at number 10, 34-3. Uh, number 19, Texas A&M gets the win over number 15, Oklahoma, 35-16. Ball State's going to give Toledo their first loss. 24-21 is the final score. Toledo was number 6. Probably going to drop quite a bit after that one. And that's going to do it for this week's top 25 matchups. We're going to go ahead and move on to week 12. So no updates this week on recruiting other than um, Patrick Myers, our top wide receiver prospect, has committed to Florida, which is really unfortunate. We have a team need of two wide receivers this season, and we don't really have any others other than Gerard Cole, 
who I was thinking about maybe putting at quarterback. I think he is pretty much going to have to be a wide receiver at this point. And we don't really have any other wide receiver prospects. We're going to have to go for a guy like Jack Coleman or um, or Kerry Gote. Kerry Gote. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to keep scouting some guys, see if we can find maybe some hidden gems that aren't being pursued at this point of the season. But probably our biggest concern of the season for next year is going to be having some new young wide receivers coming in to replace the seniors. But we do have a couple freshmen this season that have been stepping up in, in a big way with <clears throat> Brian Miller and um, and Miles Ray. So, yep, that's going to be it for recruiting for Week 10. Welcome to Week 12. Um, Uwe Ale is still at the top of the Heisman list this week, even after his three turnover performance last week. He was able to still get three touchdowns, helped us get the win, but he's going to need some better performances than that, I think, moving forward to stay at the top of the list. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that, try to feed him, uh, give him some easy matchups and that type of thing to get him to win that trophy. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this week's matchup on the road against Arizona State. Arizona State sitting at... Four and five on the season. Some pretty rough losses, especially early in the season to UTSA and Old Dominion. Uh, lost to Texas Tech and K-State, some pretty quality teams, and uh, at Baylor. Uh, but not the ideal season for these guys. I'm sure they would tell you the same. We have the advantage in every single category except for turnover differential. I'm not sure why it shows us with the arrow there, but... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to um, have a better performance this week in terms of turnovers than we did last week. So let's go ahead and jump into the game highlights and see what happens. All right, second leg of the doubleheader here, going up against Arizona State on the road. A couple of road games back-to-back. -back. Let's get started on this one. First drive for us on third and goal from the one. Big Fred Lawrence, the fullback, is going to take it in from one yard out. Going to make it 7-0 early in this one, later in the first quarter. Uwe Ale out for a drive with a little... Um, get, got the wind knocked out of them, but um, not going to be able to get the first down on that one. Fourth and three. We're going to take the three points here. Adam Wales still, I believe he's perfect on the season to this point. He may have missed one. But 10 to nothing is the score. And on our next drive, pass over to Brian Miller, who's wide open in the end zone. Ale starts off 6 of 6, 85 yards and a touchdown. First and 10, next drive for us. Arizona State with a bunch of three and outs in this first half. Benny Faison doesn't get the block he needed, but he sheds the tackle. Benny's got the Jets to finish that one. 27 yards on the touchdown run. 24 nothing to score. We get the ball back with 18 seconds left in the half inside the 10. Look at that pass across his body. Uwe Ale finds C.J. Nelson in the back of the end zone for a 5-yard touchdown. That's going to put us up 31 to nothing at the half. I think last time we played in this building, we won like 52-3 to or something. That might have been Iowa State. can't remember. But Arizona State is going to finally get on the board with a field goal here, making it 31-3. to Play action, next drive for Uiale. Deep pass down the right side, got a man, it's Miles Ray. He hauls it in for the touchdown, 47 yards on that one, just outsped his man on the wheel route. And Ale's got close to 300 yards at this point, three touchdowns. Third and 10 for Arizona State, not going to make it. Six yards on the, on the play, it's going to be fourth and four. And they're going to try a really long field goal here, and he knocks it straight through. 38-6 to late in the third quarter. Next drive for us, second and short. Deep pass down the right side once again. Look at Manjack. How does he come down with that one? Amazing catch there and with the one-on-one -on -one coverage. 44 yards down to the one-yard line. Next play, bubble screen out to Jeremy Smith, the freshman, who hauls in his first touchdown of his young career. First and 10 for Arizona State. Knocks the ball loose on the handoff, and Deshaun Akocha's got nothing but green ahead of him. Nobody even in sight here. He's going to take it all the way back for the touchdown. Scoop and score for number three. Going to make it 52-6. to six. First and ten next drive for Arizona State. And they're running back Tevin White. He's seen enough. He's got to get his team on the board with a touchdown, and he does. Runs over some guys to get there. Next drive, backups are in. Nick Hartfixon on the option. Late pitch out to uh, Jeremy Smith once again, who uh, takes it all the way to the end zone. So a 47-yard touchdown run, a receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown for him in that one. And uh, Colton Barton's going to get player of the game honors with four sacks. 59-13 is the final score in this one. We're going to go to 10-0 and on the season. Arizona State drops to 4-6. and 
They're going to need to win their last two to make a bowl game this year. 605 yards of offense in this one. It was just a bloodbath. Unfortunately, we can't fix that turnover problem. All right, here are the top 25 matchups for Week 12. Number 12, Oregon State gets a 45-42 win over number 4, Navy. Remember, both of these teams are not qualified for the playoffs, being as they play half of a FCS schedule. Number 6, San Diego State goes on the road and takes down Georgia 49-30. Number 13, Oregon gets a 55-35 win over number 1, Washington, giving them their first loss of the season. And really, those are the only big upsets, matchups of the week. Everything else kind of went as expected. So we're going to go ahead and advance to week number 13. So another week with no commitments. We did end up losing on Nick Erickson. Ends up committing to UCLA. Number one middle linebacker in the country. So that one stings quite a bit. Uh, so hopefully we're able to land some of these other top tier guys uh, before the end of the season. And that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, next time we've got maybe our toughest matchup of the season. Going up against 9-1 and one Arizona. Currently number 11 in the country. Luckily this one is at home so we'll have the crowd on our side. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for that one. See you guys later.